What's up guys, welcome to another episode of Bushcraft Heroes. My name is Matt and today I want to show you a product that you very may well be interested in if you go out into the outdoors a lot. So this video is sponsored by Alaska Paracord Design. They produce some very high quality um, paracord bracelets with a twist. Twist of survival you might say. Um, generally I like to stay away from any kind of survival-y gadgets or gimmicky stuff. Um, but this I saw and I had to reach out to them um, and see if they wanted to send me some, which they very kindly did. I chose the like light blue design because if I'm ever to use this and I take it apart, I'm gonna wanna see the cordage. They do offer some camo versions, but I really like the blue one because it stands out and it's less likely to get lost. So what makes this paracord bracelet different? Well, let me get into that. For one, everything that is constructed is made of military grade material. As far as the paracord is military grade paracord, the fire steel is a military grade fire steel that showers sparks at 5,000 degrees. One of the things I do really like is the fire steel has holes drilled in it, so it's actually cinched onto the bracelet. So once you've taken this apart, you could even use some of the spare cordage on, on there to make a lanyard for it so you don't lose that tiny little fire steel. It also includes a ceramic scraper for this fire steel and also some um, waxed tinder that is apparently waterproof and will take a spark even when soaking wet. So really interested to try this all out. It also includes a whistle on the side so you can signal for attention. Um, and overall it, it's just a very little lightweight thing that you can carry on your wrist and you know, forget that you even have it on there. So let's take it out into the field, take it apart and see how it all works. Okay guys, so it's time to test out the Alaska Paracord Bracelet, Survival Bracelet. I'm wearing it right now. It has rained recently in the area we're in right now, but as I'm dry and the bracelet's dry, I'm gonna try and simulate it's been raining really aggressively and soak it all the way through. It claims to be able to be used even if it's soaking wet. So, this is the first time that I've ever done this, so I'm gonna take it apart and just show you what my experience of it is gonna be. All right, guys, so this is it. I got no other tools on me, that's the whole point of this. So let's see how easy it is to unravel this and get a fire started. I've collect, collected a little bit of spruce boughs. I haven't prepared a whole fire base, I just wanna to check to see that it actually can start a fire significantly enough. So I guess, we're gonna pull out. So I'm exposing the flammable wick, um, like the tinder inside, the wax tinder. So I'm guessing the next thing to do is to pull this all the way out. Or I guess, I, I guess I'm gonna assume that I'm gonna build a shelter for the evening, so I'm gonna need all of this cordage. So I'm gonna take the whole bracelet apart. So I can see the ceramic um, scraper for the fire steel just poking out there. So I really don't want to lose that. It's so tiny. There it is. So I really don't want to lose that. <laughs> so let's carry on taking this wicking out. So I'm nearly there. This last bit through. There we go. So I better keep hold of that as well. So now the ferro rod. Ferro rod is on this end. So I've got to find the end of this cord bracelet, which looks like it's at this end. Never been very good at <laughs> undoing knots. All right guys, so I successfully took the bracelet apart. I'm gonna clip the whistle and the end piece back together so I don't lose the two pieces. And you can see kind of how much cord I've got there. It's actually probably about two meters of paracord. Um, overall, it's pretty good. It's a good length of paracord um, in this main, main strand. And if I take a look inside, so I can confirm it is actually 550 paracord inside of the main line, which is great. Um, I wasn't sure because I couldn't see it. Um, so I just got Bo to cut it with my knife to check for you guys to see if it is there. So what I'd probably do um, if I was making a, shelter, a survival shelter with this, 
um, is I would actually take these out individually and use them to bind a shelter together as long as it wasn't um, anything that needed to take any heavy weight um, that then multiplies my two meters into ten meters um, hang on how many strands are in there six well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, yeah. So that would make 14 meters worth of cordage in total, which is pretty good for one bracelet. So I'm just going to undo this last section here and free up the fire steel from the rest of the unit. So there we go. So I've got the buckle separate there. I really like, as I said earlier, that they drilled holes in it. So what I'm going to do as a safety precaution is I'm gonna pull out the cord from one side and then I'm actually gonna bang a knot in this end of the paracord because it would make sense to me, seeing as I've got no knife, no way to, to cut this cord, to toggle that off so that <laughs> if I drop it, it's not just gone because it's black as well, so it's just gonna vanish. So, taking the ceramic striker, I'm just gonna give this a first test, see what kind of sparks this thing can actually put out. Wow, that's actually pretty good. I'm actually kind of impressed. That's great. So let's get some of this um, tinder, this waxed tinder out. There it is. So it's just inside the inside of this bit of paracord. So I guess you just pull it out. So there it is. So you just want to pull that out of the inside. So I don't want to use this all in one go, because if you're in a survival situation, you really don't want to be using all of it in one go. So I'm going to try and see if I can separate a bit of this off um, just to use this one time. It seems to be coming apart pretty easily, actually. And it's already fluffing up just by me trying to rip a section off. Okay, so let's put the rest of that back inside as best as I can. And then what I would probably do as well is tie that piece of cordage also off to my uh, main line there. So I've still got everything, you know, all together in one piece. So next up, let's fluff this stuff up as, as best we can. Um, it's almost like trying to fluff like cattail or something like that but a bit more waxy. Be interesting to see if this does take a spark because it's it's pretty wet in my fingers. So that is such a tiny 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 bit of uh, tinder. I'm really this this is way too harsh coarse. This is way too coarse of a bird's nest. So I'm going to try and actually separate some of the thinner thinner bits of the spruce boughs out here and try and you know just get them a little bit lighter hopefully these will catch or uh, it's gonna be a big waste of time so let's leave those there I'll set a little I'll set a little base with these two sticks all right there we go so we're all set up now for the moment of truth getting this lit Quickly though, real quick. All right, so it was enough to get the spruce lit, hopefully. Super fragile at this moment. There we go. All right, guys, so there you have it. It did work successfully while soaking wet. I was really impressed by that. 
Um, I like that the, as I said, the fire steel is got a hole in it. The one thing that does concern me quite a lot about this kit, and I would love to see maybe a 2.0 version, is the ceramic scraper is so small and it doesn't have any loopholes in it. So you can't tie it off in the same manner that the paracord is. If, if this had was a little bit longer and had a hole drilled in it or something like that, so you could also tie that off to your rope and not lose it, then that would make it 10 out of 10. Because as soon as you lose this little ceramic piece, the fire steel is garbage unless you've got any other striking implement. I guess you could maybe find flint or some kind of um, stone that you could strike with, but I mean, I wouldn't want to have to rummage around and try and find that if I was, you know, in a situation where I needed to build something, uh, uh, start fire, you know, really quickly. So, but apart from that one gripe, I think it's an amazing bit of kit. So overall, really impressed with that. I, I like I said, I only used a tiny bit of the um, tinder from in there, probably an an eighth of it or something like that. So you could definitely make this last for you know several fires, and if you're going to keep a fire going overnight for a day two days three days and build it up then you know that could potentially last you for several weeks um, if you manage your fires well um, the fire striker was exceptionally easy for how tiny it is it worked really well with that ceramic blade and like I said yeah the paracord overall is is really good I'll give you a quick toot on the whistle as well because don't forget it does have a whistle with it so I'll give you a quick blast on that That's pretty loud. And you know what I'd probably do as well? I'd probably stick this whole buckle onto the end of my line here. So I've got my tinder, my fire steel, and my whistle all on the end of the bit of cordage. And I'd probably tie another knot in here so it's all bundled together and then melt this power cord off on the fire that I'd started so I have everything that I need neatly in one place to carry around with me and no chance of losing it. That's the other reason I chose the blue. This is so visible on the forest floor. If you drop it, you're much more likely to find it than if you pick a camouflage version. And seeing as it's a, it's a survival gadget, it, it makes sense to pick a really visible color for, um, yeah, for if you drop it on the ground and stuff. So I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a like and a comment. And if you'd like to pick yourself up one of these Alaska Paracord survival bracelets, I've dropped a link in the description for you guys to follow and you can grab one from them. They're Alaskan made, um, so it's not, not like a cheap like knockoff product. It's a really hardy product. I, I think it's great and um, I've got an extra one thankfully that I can wear on the rest of my trips when we go canoeing and stuff like that so if we get into any precarious situations it's just good to have on you. I think it's also something I'd like to carry if I go backpacking with my fiance for the day or go on any through hikes or anything like that. Um, taking my family out, very useful bit of kit to have and yeah I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.